let's go to the on-chain uh, the on-chain cost basis, right? And maybe just yeah. talk through kind of how this has confirmed bull markets in the past and what you're seeing here now. So you can call this a couple different things. You can call it the cost basis or, or realized price or VWAP. Um, and so it, it just, you know, it's, it's all saying the same thing. So you're, you're looking at a VWAP is a volume weighted average price. You're looking at uh, realized cap, which we've talked about several times is the market capitalization of Bitcoin based off of the last time that coins were moved. And so we can kind of track the amount of capital inflow coming into the market. Uh, and then we normalize this for just looking at short term holders in specific. Um, as, as we mentioned, we can we can look at things based off of that, that cut off that glass node has 155 days to look at short term versus long term holders. Um, and, and so what we see is that like historically, the short term holder cost basis or realized price or VWAP, um, sorry, I know I'm throwing like three different things in there. It's all saying the same thing. <laughs> um, they, they've all kind of served as, uh, this is super, served as kind of the support band in bull markets. So if you go back and look at 2017, uh, you can see these like four different retests where we came back down during a correction and tested this and bounced really nicely off of that. Um, as well as once we broke below that um, in, in, you know, at the end of 2017, that would have been, you know, time to, time to be cautious. And then once you had this kind of failed uh, retest from the underside, that would have been your, your confirmation that, you know, we've, we've kind of broken the trend. Um, and, and so it's, it's, you know, similar to, it's similar to Soper and, and, and a lot of things, what, what you can look at is, you know, when you break below, uh, some people will say, okay, you know, that's enough, that's enough signal for me to, to, you know, change my, my market outlook, right? Because we, we haven't broken below this, uh, you know, throughout the entire bull market. Now we've, we've clearly broken trend. Um, but some people who are, are a bit more conservative look for, okay, do we have confirmation? And then they'll, they'll base their opinion off of once we get that, you know, failed underside retest. Um, and, but, you know, you would have, if you did that, you know, let's say you sold uh, based off of this, you would have kind of gotten out at the same price point. You just basically sold at the dead cat instead of, instead of, you know, as soon as it broke, I personally stand in the camp of, I would be looking for kind of this failed underside retest because I think, you know, kind of the, the it, it's really difficult to time the exact top. Um, you know, you kind of had these kind of red flags and caution signals that I think you can, you can be given, but the you know the the last the, the the last week or two of parabolic moves are where the largest portion of that move are made, um, and so it's it's really difficult to like time that perfectly. But where where I do think it's reasonable to kind of um, to to look for an exit is is on that dead cat move, uh, and so this is just one of the you know an example of that where you know we we had that failed retest uh, from the underside of that band, and then as we headed into you know the 2018 uh, bear market, we had like three failed retest from the underside of that. Once we finally broke above, that's when we came out of the bottom of the bear, uh, heading into that mini 20, you know, 2019 uh, bull market, whatever you want to call this. Uh, there was a lot of that was driven by uh, the plus token Ponzi where they were like artificially locking up coins. Uh, but that's like, an, that's a conversation for another day. Uh, but then we had this failed, once we broke below, we had this failed underside retest. So that's where you would have become cautious again until we once again broke back above um, after March, 2020, uh, you know, you could see in, in September of last year, we once again bounced off, uh, bounced off of this, uh, and then broke below, um, heading into May, which would have, you know, would have been time to to become cautious as well. Uh, and then recently, we've bounced back above this, uh, you know, at the at the end of September. So, uh, two things: a, you know, notice that we've gotten back above and, and bounced off of this. Conversely, to the end of 2017, where we had a failed underside retest of that, right? So it's it's showing you that. You know, at the end of 2017, that was confirmation we were hitting into a bear market. Whereas here, as we've retested uh, at the end of September, showing that we're confirmation that we're back in a bullish trend. Uh, and, and notice too that we have confluence of a couple things that we that we keep talking about. The end of September, confirmation at the end of September. Notice there's several metrics that are all kind of pointing to that same that same concept. Um, and, and that's that's what I really look for. You know, you can see one metric and say, okay, you know, this is telling you something, but when you have three or four different things all pointing to the same thing through something that we call confluence, um, you know, that's, that's where you can really feel strong about your opinion when you, when you kind of see that across the board. Yeah. So that's super helpful. And and the next chart you have, I think is interesting because when you look at uh, the short-term holders and the, the realized price of the short-term holders compared to the long-term holders, it provides a pretty symmetrical uh, view of like when you should start accumulating and when you should be cautious. Like, how do you think about this chart? I mean, one thing I just want to touch on the last one, I, I just completely forgot to say was just, it's at, just so people know right now it's at 53 K. 
Um, so that's kind of my, my bear market floor. I think we can go below as 50 to 53 K, um, you know, and, and still hold bull market structure. Um, and that also aligns with the technical level as well as 53 K is the $1 trillion market cap threshold for Bitcoin. So I think that's a really important level for Bitcoin to kind of hold is that, that 53 K level, you know, we could wick below, but I, I, I generally kind of stand in the camp of as long as we're closing daily closes above 53 K, I don't really see anything to be concerned about. Um, but yeah, so sorry to get into this chart. Um, you're looking at what we just looked at, which is the short-term holder realized price or cost basis. And then you're comparing that to the long-term holder realized price or cost basis. Uh, and so you get this really clean oscillator where what you see is that whenever the short-term holder realized price you know, overextends the long-term holder, aka when short-term holders are kind of dominating the market, um, you can kind of get these, these signals of caution or kind of overheated signals um, for kind of the, the broader market structure. So you see that happen in, you know, the two 2013 double pumps as well as uh, in 2017. And then conversely, uh, whenever, whenever long-term holder realized price uh, goes below short-term holder realized price, that's a, that's a good time to accumulate because it's showing long-term holders are dominating the market. The speculators are leaving. Um, and so, as you can see, whenever we kind of cross below that kind of green area that I highlighted uh, that that's a good time to kind of average in buys we're sitting in kind of this funky spot, right? Where we're, we're not, we're, we're very close to the, very close to the accumulation zone, never quite, uh, you know, tap that as well as we never really reached the overheated zone earlier this year. Uh, and, and this is kind of a similar signature to uh, 2013. You know, I think completely different market structure to 2013, but just in the sense that, you know, we, we kind of had this parabolic advance, came back down, almost fully reset that and then kind of reversed uh, so that's why that's what I highlighted with those two blue circles. Uh, but do note, though, it only took three months for, for this oscillator to go from that kind of reset between the 2013 double pumps uh, to coming back above that overheated zone. So, you know, this this can happen quicker, quicker than than perhaps that, uh, you know, you'd, you'd expect. But for now, we're sitting in. Uh, healthy territory and, and we're far from overheated in that sense. And it looks like we've turned the, the the corner back towards kind of where we're headed towards that caution area, or at least, uh, you know, a, a fraction of it. Do you think that we could go lower, right? Because it looks like it's already made that cut back towards that other zone. Do you think that we could go further over the next two or three weeks? I mean, anything is possible, but, you know, I think, um, I think it would, it would take a lot to, you know, this, this looks at like the real like macro kind of trend, if you will, or broader trend. So it, it's going to take a lot to kind of see any kind of reversal in this. Um, I, I generally kind of stand in the camp that we'll probably just see this start to start to tick up into the future. Yeah.